Happy Wednesday, everybody. Here we are in Southern California at Dog Is Good. I am Gila Kurtz. I'm one of the co-founders and co-owners, and I am so happy to have you here watching the Dog Is Good Lifestyle Show because we love to bring you guys really cool people and topics and things that are of interest for you um, because you love your pets so much, just like we do. And I'm always so grateful for all the different guests that we get to bring on here, and you're in for a real treat again today as we talk with uh, Danielle. So uh, before we get started, though, I want to, you know, remind you guys to pop in and tap your friends via Facebook and remind them, hey, there's some, you know, somebody talking about some good stuff here with dogs today and get them on, get them on. We also want to encourage you to uh, sign up for the free giveaway. Every week we do a free giveaway. And even if you are watching the replay, you can register for the free giveaway. So here it is. This is one of our newest tote bags. This is available for our retail customers only. It's a, a really nice, um, like a grocery tote kind of thing. Really nice um, recyclable fabric. So it's very sturdy. And here, let me turn it around this way so you can see it's a dog can change the way you see the world. And when we go through our topic today of how canines help senior citizens, once again, we'll be reminded about how dogs really do change the way you see the world. And I love this inner pocket too. It has a little doggy on it as well. So <laughs> awesome. So you can win that by entering the, the um, giveaway. And uh, take time too, if you are not part of the Dog with the Lifestyle group, you need to join that because that's the only place you're going to find out who won. And it's also the place where you will get access to private and special deals and promotions um, and special things that we create just for you. And also, if you have not registered yet for your Fur Covered Wisdom, you got to do it. But actually, if you are somebody who has registered, give it as a gift to somebody else. I've had a couple people reach out to me and ask how they can gift it to other people. And um, you just sign them up with their email and their dog's name. And before you know it, they're getting a note every single week from their very own dog, something to inspire them and give them um, something to think about in the week ahead. So uh, as you pop in, also please introduce yourself. I, I can see that people are here, but I want to just um, know where you are and maybe who your dog is. And um, at the uh, throughout the conversation, feel free to share your experiences or ask questions as well. And now I'm going to introduce our guest who has so graciously given us her time this afternoon on Wednesday. She's out in the East Coast, so I know it's a little bit later there. Um, and this is Danielle. Is it Mally or Mally? Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah. it's Mally. Okay, so this is Danielle Mally. She is the manager of Caregiver Canines, which is a visiting therapy dog program. She's been matching therapy dogs and homebound senior citizens for seven years and enjoys every single minute of it. Danielle has been able to combine her love of dogs and her affinity for older people into a career that she is proud to be a part of. She feels that dogs present the ultimate connection between human and animal. There's no greater comfort for a dog lover than to have a warm head in their hands and the feeling of unconditional love in their hearts. And that is so true. Danielle, welcome. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you for having me. And also welcome to the folks who are popping in, this Shay and, and Bill. Thank you for joining us today. So Danielle, um, well, first off in your bio, just the last few sentences are so heartfelt. Uh, clearly you have a passion for... <laughs> with our senior citizens but you also mm -hmm. have a dog and I'm curious to know like how you came um, about this as a career for yourself uh, I kind of came about it in a roundabout way I was a teacher um, and then I had my daughter and was staying home with her and um, when she went to school I decided to walk dogs at our local animal facility um, so I was doing that and the woman who was in charge of it he was a volunteer with Caregiver Canines. And so she said, you know, they're looking for someone to run the program and I think you'd be great at it. And so that's that's how it came about. So seven years later, I am I am still here. Uh, I love what I do. I, I have a great affinity for uh, the older population. I was very lucky to have all four of my grandparents for a very long time. Um, so I spent a lot of time around older people growing up and um, I really feel like the older population kind of gets pushed aside a lot. So this is uh, a really great way to um, 
give back a little um, for for all the things that they've done for us. And and we're part, you know, Caregiver Counties is part of a larger organization called Caregiver Volunteers of Central Jersey. So the the therapy dogs are just one part of our overall organization, which which provides free services, and it's all done by volunteers. So, you know, I know that there's a lot of work that therapy dogs do going into hospitals, let's say, or maybe even into nursing homes, but your program is very, is very unique and it's so much more personalized. Can you share a little bit about um, what the, the focus is and how that program works? For, for sure. So the focus uh, of our program, it's seniors over the age of 60 and no longer driving. So, you know, these are people that are homebound. Um, most of them have had pets in their lives and they can't have them anymore, you know, due to financial or physical reasons. You know, they can't walk the dog, they can't take them to the vet. It's, you know, we all know it's very expensive to have a pet. So this kind of gives them a little bit of um, a friendly visit. Uh, they get to see the volunteer, they get to see the dog, they come once a week, they stay for an hour. Um, and they become very, very close. Um, uh, the people we visit become very attached to their therapy dogs. Um, they kind of think of them as their own dogs. Uh, it's very sweet. They become very attached to their volunteers. Um, I have some volunteers that have been visiting the same people for years. Wow. So it's it's an ongoing thing. It's not just a short visit. Um, these these they build really lasting relationships. That is so amazing. You know, there's some comments uh, going on here uh, about people who also have therapy dogs or who have, um, you know, certified therapy dogs in their lives. And so that kind of brings up the question, you know, sometimes there's confusion as to the difference between a therapy dog, an emotional support dog, a service dog. Could you right. on that and highlight yours is a focus on therapy work, but maybe we could explain the difference be between all three. That might help everybody understand. Sure. Um, so... You know, I always start with service dogs and service dogs are, you know, they, they are working dogs. They work with one person. They might be a seeing eye dog, a hearing assistance dog, um, a PTSD dog um, for a returning soldier. Um, they, they have a specific job and they work with one person. Um, and, and as most of you know, you know, you can't pet service dogs. Service dogs are working dogs. Um, you know, you're not supposed to walk up and pet them. You know, they have a job to do. And the big thing is that service dogs are allowed anywhere. Um, they can go in any store. They can't, you know, their owners can't be refused any type of housing when you have a service dog. Um, a therapy dog um, is also a working dog, but it's much more relaxed. Um, you usually find them in, you know, hospitals, nursing homes, um, libraries. They, they're in court rooms now. Um, I've seen them in um, airports. So they're in lots of different places and they are there for you to pet them and they do exactly what, what it says. They are providing therapy. So they're there for you to cuddle and love and you know they want your attention. Um, and then the emotional support dogs, which is a very gray, murky area still. Um, again, they're usually work for one person. Um, and like therapy dogs, um, emotional support dogs are not allowed everywhere. They have to be invited in. Um, you can be refused housing if you have an emotional support dog. So there are some legal differences between the three. Um, so, you know, our therapy dogs are really just what it says. They, they provide therapy for, for people that need it. Um, thanks for that explanation, and thank you guys for popping in and, and all your comments, too. It's greatly appreciated. If you are first popping in, I'd love to invite you to share with other people to help them join, um, because they might be interested in doing this on their own. Now, I come across a lot of people who are always um, seeking ways where they can give, and if they can do it with their dogs, it's even, even better. Um, so I was going to ask, as it relates to um, the training, you know, how does one go through a training process so that they can become a volunteer and ensure that their dogs are certified or um, qualified? You know, what's that process? So uh, we don't actually train the dogs. They come to us already trained, but 
um, you know, I've been around it long enough to know, um, to look for definite things. You know, number one is your dog has to like people. <laughs> um, if your dog doesn't like people, they're probably not going to be a good therapy dog. So, and, and it could be, they might like, you know, kids or they might like older people or they might not like men and they like women. You, you have to know your dog. Um, and so if you think your dog is, is good at that and they really love people, then you have to have basic obedience for the dog. So, you know, your sit, stay down, um, you have to be able to walk away from your dog and your dog not follow you. Um, any, any good trainer is gonna tell you that your dog has to have basic obedience because there is a test they have to take. Mm -hmm. So if you're sure your dog has basic obedience, they're not jumping up on somebody, um, you know, not barking excessively, then, then you can go ahead with the therapy dog training, which is depending on where you go. I know in our area, it's like a couple weeks um, for the class. It's once a week and they teach you things. Um, they get the dog acclimated to things like beeping machines and balloons and crutches and canes and walkers. And um, they'll drop loud things on the floor so that the dog gets used to you know, not being startled. Um, the the really big one is not picking up something off the floor because, you know, God forbid you're in a hospital or something and somebody drops medicine on the floor. You don't want your dog to pick up something like that. So that's that's basically the therapy dog class. And then at the end, um, you and your dog both take a test together. Um, you both have to pass. And uh, and then you're certified, and then you can you can go on and volunteer wherever you know therapy dogs are welcome in your area. So that's the how do you guys determine um, your clientele? So the seniors that you're going to then serve at, you know with the volunteers, how do they um, get get selected for this program? So uh, people come to me in different ways. Um, usually they are registering for services for our overall organization. And, um, you know, one of our questions is, would you like a visit from a therapy dog? So most of them come to me through that way. Um, sometimes their adult children have searched online um, and found our program. Um, you know, they'll search for dogs visiting, you know, uh, older people. Um, and then, Sometimes it's the person themselves they've heard about us. It could be a press release. It could be, you know, something on Facebook. You know, it doesn't matter. So when they come to me, um, I'm very particular. I'm very, um, I'm very protective of our therapy dogs. So I always find out about the person first and what kind of dogs they've had. And then I go out and visit the home myself to make sure it's appropriate to have a dog in the home. Um, if, if I wouldn't bring my dog, I wouldn't expect my volunteers to bring their dog. Um, you know, it's gotta be a clean home with stuff that's not all over the floor. Um, and then I match them up with the dog, depending on personality types and energy level of the dog. And, and the first time I go out with them. So I make sure everything goes okay, um, make sure the match is good. And from then on, it's the volunteer and the dog go on their own. So, I mean, people come to me in different ways. Got it. And how many um, how many senior citizens are you serving currently? Currently, I am around 30. I have, um, as of right now, we have over 50 dogs in the program. Um, yeah, it's a lot. Um, we just got a whole bunch. So I'm actually looking for more people to help. So anybody out there, if you're <laughs> if you're in Ocean County and you know someone who needs help, uh, we're more than happy to get a dog out to help them. Well, you were talking about also um, before we came on uh, expanding it nationwide. So how do how are how can people open up chapters? So uh, they can go about it uh, different ways. Usually, we try to work with other nonprofits that are also serving the senior population, um, and some you know. We have six chapters right now um, that are that are up and operating across the U.S. And so we they each do it a little bit different, um, but it, it's it's all helping seniors uh, that are homebound. So if they if you're in an area where you know uh, if you have a nonprofit and you want to implement this program, you can give me a call. You can email me, and and we'll walk you through the process. It's not a difficult 
thing to set up. Um, it's a lot of legwork. It's a lot of legwork to find out what kind of therapy dog programs are already in your area, if there's people training therapy dogs in your area, uh, if the senior population is, you know, going to be, you know, if they're going to be good to go with it, if they, if this is something they like. So there's a lot of legwork before you even get signed up. So um, there are some questions and I'm going to get to that in just a second. But um, wanted to ask, one of the things that makes your program so special is the fact that you're actually going into these people's homes as opposed to mm -hmm. or, uh, or a nursing home. And I would imagine that it's probably a very emotional experience for the seniors. Can you share with us just from your own personal experience or maybe a story that really um, illustrates the benefit, this, pos this positive benefit that occurs with that dog-human connection, and maybe sure. Um, so, one of my first visits, um, I had a woman uh, call me, and her husband had Alzheimer's, and we do we help a lot of a lot of families um, with Alzheimer's, and so she said, you know, we've always had collies. Do you have a collie you could bring out? And I happen to have a collie, so uh, we brought the collie out. You personally, or somebody in the group, in the group, we have a we had a collie um, that was volunteering with us. So, uh, you know, she said to me, she said, you know, John is very, he's not responsive. He doesn't talk a lot. He's in bed most of the time. Um, but I think this might really help him. So I said, you know, of course we'll bring it out. So we brought the dog out, and um, you know, we go in, and and um, my volunteer Lori and Bandit was the dog, and we sat down. And uh, John came shuffling out out of his room and he sat down and we started talking to him little by little. And then all of a sudden he just opened up and he was talking and talking and talk and telling us all about how he was the first one that lived in his neighborhood and how he raised collies and how he used to drive around with them on the tractor. And he talked for 45 minutes straight. It was amazing. And so at the end, and you know, we didn't know him to, to know that this was totally different from what he's like. So after we left, I called his wife the next day and I said, you know, how do you think it went? She, she was flabbergasted. She said, I have not heard him talk this much in years. She said, and as soon as you left, he shut back down and went in his room and that was it for the rest of the day, he didn't talk. So when the dog was there, he came out of his shell, he recognized it, he loved having the dog there, he would pet the dog. And then when the dog would leave, he would, you know, shut back down again. And, and they didn't visit very long because his health declined rapidly. But, you know, his wife, after, um, you know, we stopped the visits, I called his wife and she said, I just want to thank you for giving me my husband back mm -hmm. for that 45 minutes once a week. She said, because that, it helped me even more than it helped him because it, it made me see my husband the way he used to be. So is, it, yeah, is every story that impactful? No, but that to me, it was one of my first matches and that really hooked me and made me even more passionate about what we do. Oh, absolutely. Oh my gosh. That's like, I'm still hearing about that. Yeah. There are a couple questions and hi, Karen. Huh? in and Shalanda and Shay who's been on and Janet, thank you for your sweet comment. Um, how does the training that you guys offer, is there any difference between that and canine good citizen training? Right, I see that. Um, good, uh, the canine good citizen training is really just, um, it's kind of like a certificate when you get, when you're done with basic obedience training. Uh, it does not certify your dog in any way to be a therapy dog or, or anything like that. It basically means that your dog has good manners and has been trained in obedience. You have to go further on to get to the to the therapy dog level. Yeah, and it's probably a really good foundation. As Absolutely. As well. Yeah, because that's the core element, particularly with the therapy dog, is, is that they're, they're super well-mannered. Yes, know? A particular skill for service per se, but that, um, that they're definitely well mannered. And you know, and, and now what about the dog besides the um, the um, the obvious uh, behavioral 
training, like mm -hmm. how to follow cues and whatnot, uh, the overall uh, demeanor of the dog. So uh, can, you know, because some people have dogs that are just they're just perfect to be therapy dogs. Just mm -hmm. their, their temperament is fantastic for it. Yeah, I, I mean, usually, um, well, I can tell you they have to be um, over a year of one year to even go for training. Uh, so, and, and we all know different breeds, uh, you know, they mellow out at different ages. So I would say that your dog has to be on the mellow side, you know, not a crazy kooky dog. Um, and it's amazing. Some dogs are crazy kooky. And then once they put their vest on, they're like a whole different dog and they know they're going to work. So I can't really say, you know, one type is better than another type. Um, you know, the other thing that's great about our program is that not all of our therapy dogs are dog friendly, which makes our program great because they can still be therapy dogs and they love people, but they might not love other dogs. So they don't have to interact with other dogs. They're just interacting with a person. Um, so that's that's something that, you know, I don't want to discourage people if their dog doesn't like other dogs, but it loves people. Your dog can still be a therapy dog. Um, there's there's definitely you know ways around that. So I wouldn't say there's one t breed that's better than the other. Uh, we have all different breeds. Uh, we have little tiny Coton de Tulliars all the way up to gigantic Newfoundland. Wow. So yeah, it doesn't matter. We have we have pit bulls. We have Dobermans. We've had German Shepherds, Cocker Spaniels, Labs, Goldens, everything. And, and all the mutts you can imagine. Do you guys have statistics on um, life extension as a result of the service that you guys provide? I, we don't have life extension, um, um, but did help. Yeah, we did do a study uh, with a local college, um, and we actually measured um, blood pressure and heart rate, and uh, we did a series of questions on people. Um, when they were before the visit and after the visit. And then we we compared that to when they just visited with a person and not a dog. Uh, and we found that um, heart rate, um, you know, their pulse, everything went down when the dog visited. Um, and the way they answered the questions definitely led us to know that they are definitely less stressed on the days they know that the dog is coming. They're less lonely on the days that the dog is coming. And those good feelings last for a day or two after the dog visits, too. Oh, that's what about, um, okay, Stephanie's asking, do you face any yeah. challenges during the visit or do you have a routine during visits? Like, are there specific things that you do during the visit? Uh, no, everyone is different. Um, the biggest challenge is the, that our clients don't want to let the dogs leave. <laughs> They want to keep the dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we don't really have a routine. Everyone is different. Uh, like I said, they visit usually once a week. We try to keep it the same day, the same time. Um, so, but that doesn't always happen. You know, people's. How, how long? Just one hour? Uh, they're about an hour. Um, I'm not going to say that some of my volunteers don't stay for much longer than that because um, they do. Uh, but usually, typically, it's an hour. Because the dogs start to get a little antsy after a while. Yeah. Um, and are the people engaging mostly with the dogs, or they're also engaging with the, um, the volunteer? You know, it starts out they engage more with the dog, but then the more they come, the more they become closer to the to the handler. And um, you know, I have, like I said, I have people that have been visiting the same people for years. Um, I have um, one woman that we visit, she's 103. Um, yeah, and the people that have been visiting her have been with her for almost five years. Wow. So yeah, and she moved to assisted living. And so they still visit her at assisted living. Um, you know, they celebrated her 100th birthday with her. So they, they really become sort of a family. Yeah, I can imagine. What, what are you most excited about? with your program and how it's growing and the impact that it has on these senior citizens? I think I'm most excited about the fact that therapy dogs are getting more exposure and people are really realizing the benefit of therapy dogs. I get 
really excited when I see things like they're using therapy dogs in, you know, courtrooms and classrooms. And I think it's a really underutilized way to help people cope with bad times. Um, I see a big difference in the seniors that we visit. Um, and I, it's a really great way to give them back a little bit of comfort and, and joy in their day. Um, I would love to see it all over the country. I, I think it's, you know, and I'm biased, but I, you know, it's a great program. Um, and it really brings a lot of comfort and peace of mind to people. Absolutely. So how can people find you? So uh, we are all over the place. So uh, we're on Facebook, Caregiver Canines. Uh, we have our own website, www.caregiverkanines.org. Um, you can find us on Twitter. You can find us on Instagram. Um, and they can um, always email me. Uh, it's Danielle M, as in Mary, at caregivervolunteers.org. Awesome. And we'll pop that in the comments, too. Um, for those of you out there watching now, do you have any questions on, on the program, on the, how it benefits seniors, on how you could get involved or do something similar in your own community? Uh, we're, I know Danielle's happy to answer any questions. Yep. I see some of my volunteers are watching. <laughs> Besides who are volunteers for taking time out. You know, it's such a, um, I, I'm curious, for the volunteers who do work with the program, is it, Something they do just once a week, or do they have multiple visits at the Some of them have multiple, um, but I, it's funny because a lot of our therapy dogs have busier schedules than I do. Um, they visit multiple places. Uh, most of them visit the local libraries. Uh, a couple of them visit local um, nursing homes and things like that. So not only do they volunteer with us, they volunteer other places also. Do they, do they have to have a... Uh, is there a vetting process? Like I'm wondering, you know, some people might be concerned that even though it's a, they're with a service dog, that it's a stranger coming into someone's home. Um, you know, for our program in particular, um, I talk to the people before we come out, um, and and all of our volunteers go through background checks. Um, we're very um, stringent about that. Um, they they go for orientations, and I with my volunteers in particular, um, I meet them before they even start volunteering with us. I meet them, I, I, the handler, I meet the dog, they come into the office. I, you know, I rile the dog up a little, um, you know, I give the dog treats to see how they take treats. And, you know, I've, I have, knock on wood, I've, <laughs> I've never had an issue. So, um, you know, we're, we're careful. Yeah, and anybody who's working with a dog and giving up their time in that capacity, I would imagine is a good person with a good heart, yeah. for sure. But yeah. I'm just curious, if some people, you know, there's always people who are questioning, you know, and I'm curious if there's any particular vetting process that a person would have to go through or to, um, to be qualified in, to uh, participate as a volunteer. Yeah. Um, awesome. So is there anything else that you would like to share uh, to our audience about the program? Um, no, just please follow us on Facebook. And if you, you know, if you know an organization in your area that this program would benefit, please share our information, share the program. Um, it's a really great program. And, um, you know, the volunteers that I'm around, I, I, I wouldn't be here without my volunteers. They're amazing. They, they do so much and they go above and beyond all the time. It's a great family kind of atmosphere we have. Um, uh, they all call me Aunt Danielle to the dogs. <laughs> and, uh, I'm like the crazy aunt that gets them all riled up and breaks all the rules. Um, well, you have to have one in every family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. the nutty one. That's fantastic. And if you guys are watching or know people in the New Jersey area, because this mm -hmm. is all national until um, people bring it national, um, who might benefit from these services or would most definitely benefit from services you should reach out as well and let them know because some people just don't know that this is available yep. and and I just love the beauty of it is that they go directly into the home and if you get a chance take time to look at their website because there's some very touching and moving video um, and it made me think uh, I was sharing with some people earlier today that you know I mean aging is inevitable we're all going to age at some point and we're going to get to that place where we aren't as able to care for our own dogs 
as we are today, and that it's there, it's comforting to know that there's a, you know opportunities where we can always be with a dog, if you will, if we can't have our own in our in our homes or quiet. So I think the service that you do provide is fantastic and so needed and clearly just with the results you shared from the study, uh, it's so, it, it's known um, and documented but not often talked about the, right. the detail behind how dogs um, really affect us physiologically and emotionally. So um, it's great, great stuff. So I appreciate you being here today. Thank and you. Everybody, if you would like, uh, this is um, Danielle Maley, and I am Gila Kurtz, one of the co-founders co-owners of Dog is Good, and we want you to enter to win a free giveaway, which is our dog can change the way you see the world tote bag. This is I one. have that bag. <laughs> that one or the orange? Or the I have the tote bag. I have the orange one. Oh, awesome. Yeah, and this one's a little bit different. This is more like a, um, what do you call these, like a shopping bag. Like yeah. It's really durable, really sturdy. And very nice, and certainly that message is so all. Oh, oh, see, I have it right behind me too. It's like my yep. favorite. So very true. Um, so you can go to enter that. Sign up for Fur Covered Wisdom. You can do that by going to furcoveredwisdom.com and give that to other people you know. And of course, join our lifestyle group where we have um, lots of fun things going on. You guys can connect with each other as dog lovers, and um, and we can also share with you anything that you would like. From dog is good, um, special deals and promotions and events that we'd like to do for you as well. Um, and so with that, I want to wish you a very good Wednesday and great week ahead. And Danielle, thank you again so much for your time. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you. I appreciate you and the work you do as well as all the volunteers that support you, your organization, and most importantly, the people that they serve with senior service. Well, thank you for what you guys do. Great. Thank you. All right. Take care. Have a great day. Bye, everyone. Bye.